NASA's spacecraft assembly facilities. The photo you see here is of a clean room in one such facility at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Everything that goes into these rooms is subject to rigorous decontamination and sterilization procedures in an effort to minimize what we refer to as forward contamination, that is, contamination of planetary bodies with Earth-bound microbes. As part of this, the Planetary Protection Group at NASA takes samples from every available surface of the spacecraft during assembly and then cultures these samples to see what survived the sterilization process. To date, since the 1970s, over 4,000 isolates have been cataloged through this process to survive the sterilization process. We were given two such isolates by JPL from the construction of the Mars Science Laboratory, or the Curiosity Rover, uh, 117 and 145, previously uncharacterized strains of P. bacillus latus and Brachybacillus forstolensis. We subjected them to phylogenetic analysis, optimized their temperature, pH, and salinity, conducted biochemical assays to measure their metabolic activity, their enzymatic activity, and their carbon utilization, and then conducted morphological assessments to see what they look like at their optimal growth conditions. But what is it that makes the species novel? Well, the gold standard right now is the 16S ribosomal RNA sequence. This is a stretch of DNA that is the codes for the small subunit of the prokaryotic ribosome, the protein synthesis machinery. And it's so well evolutionarily conserved among groups of bacteria that if you have a sequence from your sample and you run it through NCBI's database and it's less than 98.7% similar to the closest possible neighbor, then what you have represents a novel species. Greater than that, it might be a novel strain of an existing species, as in our case. When we first began this project, we actually thought we had novel species because we uh, mismatched our 16S sequences to our samples. And we generated phylogenetic trees, as you can see here, 145, and what we thought to be its closest neighbor at 97.53% similarity. And then as you get further away, more distantly related strains. We began with our optimization temperature. We took standard tryptone soy broth TSV, inoculated bacteria, and placed them at varying temperatures for about 24 hours. After this, we took them out, measured their optical density, or the turbidity cloudiness of the broth, and using a spectrophotometer. We quantified these, and then graphed them. You can see that 117 grows detectively from about 20 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius, and 145 grows detectively from about 32 to 50 degrees Celsius, making it a rather thermotolerant strain. After this, we confirmed their optimal growth conditions by streaking all of these tubes onto TSA, tryptone soy agar, and then seeing which colonies or which samples produce the most growth on plates. We found that 117 was optimal at 37, actually right about where the peak is, and then 145 was optimal at 45 degrees. Let's get right to the peak. We did the same thing with salinity optimization. Graphs were included here because they only move across three different salinities. We held the temperatures at the optimum for each strain and then varied their salt concentration. 117 grew between 0 and 5 degrees, or 5% salt concentration, and best at 1%. 145 grew between 0.5 and 2.5, best of the standard TSB concentration of 0.5%. Lastly, we started looking at their pH optimization. So we kept their temperature and salinities at their optimum, and then varied the relative acidities of each two. Both of these strains grew between 6 and 9 at detectable levels. 117 had a nice peak here at roughly neutral conditions, pH 7. 145 had a much flatter peak, and so to determine the optimum, we did the exact same thing we did with the temperature and streaked them onto the TSA, and confirmed that actually 145 prefers alkaline conditions, a rare trait among most bacteria. So next we started looking at their biochemical characteristics. What you see here is a 
API 20NE strip and an API 50 strip. These strips come preloaded with carbon sources and indicators, and when you inoculate the bacteria, wait 24 hours, it'll change color to tell you what carbon sources, what biochemical